Soil is the oldest and complex engineering materials. From the early 20th century, the rapid growth of cities, industry and commerce required a huge development of infrastructure such as skyscrapers, tunnels, bridges, runways, transmission line towers, etc. This course is intended to uh, provide a basic understanding of soil behavior, an appreciation of soil mechanics and the principles of uh, basic principles of soil mechanics. Before venturing into the subject, let us look into the origin of the soils and the necessity of study of soil mechanics. The earth crust is composed of soil and rock. The rock can be defined as a natural aggregate of minerals that are connected by strong bonding or attractive forces. Soil may be defined as the unconsolidated material sediments and deposits of solid particles that have resulted from the disintegration of the rock. So, if you look into the rock, rock is a consolidated material with permanent attractive forces. Soil may be defined as an unconsolidated or uncemented material with attractive forces may not be permanent as that of rock. So, what is soil? In general, in general sense of engineering, soil is defined as the uncemented aggregate or granular material of mineral grains and decayed organic matter along with the liquid and gas that occupy the empty spaces between solid particles. Most of the man-made structures except those which float or fly are supported by natural soil or rock deposits. So, if you look into this uh, sphere, uh, uh, on the top it exists biosphere and the below it is geosphere where the soil, rock and water, ground water are existing. So, they are subjected to a severity of environment such as temperature, pressure, humidity, rain and snow etcetera. So, before uh, looking into the details of soil mechanics, let us define soil mechanics. Soil mechanics is the branch of science that deals with the study of the physical properties of soil and the behavior of the soil mass subjected to various types of forces. In other words, soil mechanics is the study of the both solid and fluid mechanical characteristics of soils. If you look into the solid mechanics issues, we are interested how much soil will deform when it is loaded, when loads are, loads are applied and what rate does soil deform that is interested to analyze. How much load can we apply to soil before it fails? How does soil fail? These questions are required to be asked from the solid mechanics point of view. From the fluid mechanics issue, how does water flow through soil or how fast or at what rate? How can fluid flow through soil cause it to fail? So, these issues are required to be answered as far as fluid mechanics is concerned. Why do as civil engineers study soil mechanics? That is the question we should ask ourselves before venturing into the subject. In brief, all branches of civil engineering require an understanding of soil and how it behaves, namely structural engineering, transportation engineering, environmental engineering and hydraulic engineering, they require this particular concepts of soil mechanics to analyze the problems of civil engineering. As far as the structural engineering is concerned, Virtually all civil engineering type structures eventually come into contact with soil or via their foundations that is for bridges, office and residence buildings or large public buildings, chimney towers, transmission line towers, offshore drilling rigs etcetera. So, knowledge of soil mechanics is essential to assure that structures are properly supported. This can avert the structural damage and failure, loss of line, loss of life and financial loss. As far as transportation engineering is concerned, we see road, bed, road beds are often built of soil and the roadways themselves can often pass through mountains, cuts, fields, etc. So, understanding soil mechanics can, can prevent problems with pavement potholing and cracking as well as embankment and slope failures that can wipe out entire roadways. From environmental engineering point of view, Liquid toxins or pollutants often spilled or released inadvertently into or onto the soil or landfilling land of municipal solid waste or hazardous solid waste. As a result, important, important questions that need to be addressed are 
will the pollutants remain in place or possibly be transported through soil or uh, if so and what rate can anything be done to clean up the pollution such as working out of remedial measures like provision of the barriers or remediation measures for cleaning the pollution from the hydraulic engineering point of view the design of earthen flow retention structures such as dams levees dikes storage ponds etc require a knowledge of how water is transported through soil so it also requires that to know how water flowing through soil can cause failure by mechanisms such as boiling piping erosion and scour so before looking into the details of the origin of soils let us look into some field case histories this particular case history shows a severe rutting of roads on weak formation so this can create uh, a rutting which is shown and which affects the rideability of roads this particular building as you have seen in the figure shown which is the hanging on the top of the landslide debris and this part of this uh, this sort of things really cause alarming uh, uh, signals for the soil mechanics engineers what you have seen in the figure on the left hand side is a landslide debris along roadway which uh, stops that roadway for number of days and also affects the people of the life life of the people on your right hand side you are seeing a photograph of the roadway sinking problem so these sort of problems uh, are very challenging to the soil mechanics engineers or geotechnical engineers so as we have seen the behavior of the structure depends upon the properties of the soil on which structure rests again the properties of the soil rests on the depends on the properties of the rocks from which they are derived so we are interested as far as civil engineering civil engineers are concerned we are required to study the properties of soil such as its properties of origin grain size distribution ability to, to drain water strength of the soil mechanical behavior of the soil when they are sheared or compressed or when water flows through it so these aspects will be covered in the due course of the lectures in this course so before giving the origin of the soils let us uh, look into the classification of the rocks based on their deposition the rocks that form the earth surface are classified mainly into three types they are igneous sedimentary and metamorphic igneous rocks are those formed directly from the molten start of molten state of magma if the molten rock cools very slowly the different materials segregate into large crystals forming a coarse grain or granular structure in this case of igneous rocks the magma cools very slowly so the different materials segregate into large crystals forming a coarse grain or granular structure this type of igneous rocks uh, we can give an example like granite which consists of quartz or feldspar minerals because of the high silica content these rocks are called acidic rocks and basically there are light colored rocks gabbro another example of igneous rock which is due to the presence of the dark ferromagnesium materials rocks whose minerals contain iron magnesium calcium or sodium but little silica are classified as basic rocks so more silica rocks are called acidic rocks less silica rocks are called basic rocks when you look into the igneous rocks again when the solution of the minerals is cooled more rapidly tiny crystals of the minerals are formed in a glossy matrix or vitreous matrix examples for this case are felsite extremely fine grained rocks or basalt when formed with ferromagnesian materials igneous rocks like uh, uh, scoria pumice and obsidian will form when the solution of magma is cooled very very rapidly the minerals do not separate into crystals but solidify as amorphous vitreous rock the next classification of the rock is sedimentary rocks these rocks are formed from accumulated deposits of soil particles or remains of certain organisms that have become hardened by pressure or cemented by minerals this is due to the abundant availability of cementing materials in the flowing water such as silica carbonates or iron oxides for example example to this uh, sedimentary rocks are limestones 
sandstone, shale, conglomerate, and breccia. So, the sedimentary rocks are formed from the accumulated deposits of soil particles or remains of certain organisms that have become hardened by pressure or cemented by minerals like uh, uh, carbonates and iron oxides. The third one, the metamorphic rocks, the origin of these rocks or a source of these rocks is either due to igneous rocks or due to sedimentary rocks. This results when an any type of existing rock is subjected to a process called metamorphism. The metamorphism is nothing but the change brought about by the combinations of heat, pressure and plastic flow so that the original rock structure and mineral compositions are changed. Here the plastic flow refers to a slow viscous movement and rearrangement within the rock mass due to external forces. For example, if you look into here, metamorphism of limestone gives marble, metamorphism of shale gives slate, foliated rock. Metamorphism of granite gives gneiss and metamorphism of sandstone gives quartzite. So, we have seen three basic rock classifications igneous, sedimentary and metamorphic rocks. So, these rocks they are subjected to different types of weathering like physical or chemical weathering and in the process they get transported by different agencies and they get disintegrated into boulders, gravel, sand silt and clay. In the, in the figure which is shown here in this slide, where the portion containing the gravel, sand, silt and clay is relevant to soil mechanics. And if you go from boulders to gravel to sand, silt and clay, the size of the particle reduces. That indicates that the soil has got wide range of particles. Now, Rocks whose chief mineral is quartz with high silica content, when they decompose and then de when they decompose and disintegrate, predominantly they reduce sandy or gravelly soil with little clay. So, as we said, the acidic rocks are light colored. So, the sand and gravelly soil are reduced from or deduced from quartz minerals of quartz minerals with high silica content. Similarly, the basic rocks when they decompose to the fine textured silt and clay soils. The clays are not small fragments of the original materials that existed in the parent rock, but they are result of the primary rock forming minerals decomposing to form secondary minerals. So, the basic rocks decompose to fine textured silt and clay soils. So, acidic rocks decompose to give sandy and gravelly soils. So, soil can be grouped into two, two broad categories depending upon the method of deposition like residual and transported. Residual soil is the one which is formed from the weathering of the rock and remain at the location of their origin. This is the material which may possess mineralogical resemblance to the parent rock. So, transported soil is the soil where the materials that have been moved from the place of their origin. So, like agencies like gravity, water, glaciers, or man either singularly or in combination. So, residual soils they remain in the same place or transported soils they get transported by agencies like gravity, water, glaciers or man either singularly or in combination. The characteristics of the residual soils are mainly depend upon the climatic conditions like humidity, temperature, rainfall in that particular area or the natural drainage pattern and form and extent of vegetation cover. For the formation of residual soil to take place, a warm and humid climate is favorable to the formation of residual soils and the nature of residual soil differs markedly at different depths below the ground surface and constantly changes with time. Soil deposits in the Deccan Plateau are mainly of residual in nature. So, the residual soils characteristics mainly are the depend upon the climate conditions natural drainage pattern, form and extension of vegetation cover. Further, these transported soils which are transported by different agencies, they are classified based on the transporting agency and method of deposition. Like alluvial soils transported in running water like rivers and lacustrine soils deposited in quiet lakes, marine soil which are deposited in sea water, aeolian soils transported by agency called wind, 
glacial by a ice the glaciation is a process where massive movement of the ice sheets occurs colluvial soils deposited through the action of landslide and slope wash so we have here in this slide discussed about the types of the transported soils like alluvial soil lacustrine soil marine soil eolian soil glacial soils and colluvial soils alluvial soils are formed by transporting with the help of running water or running streams lacustrine deposited in the quiet lakes marine deposited in the sea water eolian transported by wind glacial by ice colluvial by deposit deposit deposited through the action of landslide and slope wash before looking to the transported soils let us have some examples about different types of transported soils some typical examples are loess wind blown deposit with very uniform fine silt particles possess slight cementation properties because of the presence of carbonates within it they are formed basically in arid and semi arid regions with yellowish light brown color tuff is the fine grained silty slightly cemented volcanic ash which is formed by wind or water the glacial till which is mainly formed in hilly regions is heterogeneous mixture of boulders gravel sand silt and clay so here we have seen one example of transported soil like loess tuff and glacial till another example is warwood clay this is alternate layers of silt and clay deposited in fresh water glacial lakes generally one band of silt and clay deposited each year each layer is approximately around 1 cm or 10 mm thick the silt gets deposited whenever there is a uh, low runoff and clay gets deposited whenever there is low runoff silt gets deposited whenever there is uh, high runoff marl is a very fine grained soil of soft marine origin impermeable in nature and greenish in color basically its origin is in the marine environment peat which is a highly organic soil consisting of almost entirely of vegetable matter in varying stages of decomposition basically it is fibrous in nature brown to black in black in color and highly compressible so peat is a material which is required to be avoided in the construction of foundations basically the major soil deposits are divided by with the help with keeping by following factors into consideration like ambience the surrounding environment geography and topography basically soils are attributed like expansive high shrink and swell characteristics attributed to the mineral basically they are black in color due to the presence of iron magnesium and titanium in this this type of soils are called black cotton soils in india they extend around 3 lakh square kilometers in india marine very soft and may contain organic matter so these uh, clays are marine clays they exist along the coastal environment coastal belt of the countries the lateral laterite soil which is basically red in color due to fe2o3 which undergoes a process called laterization which is nothing but the leaching of the silica due to advanced chemical weathering the another soil is alluvial soil basically alternate layers of sand silt and clay basically they form along the river uh, beds and they are prone for liquefaction if they are very very fine grained in nature desert soils basically they are wind blown are uniformly graded very difficult to compact them and very difficult to construct the roadways on the desert soils glacial soils basically boulder clays they occur along the hilly regions where they consist about all ranges of particle sizes so major soil deposits are divided into expansive marine laterite alluvial deposits desert soils and glacial soils before uh, looking into this i would like to make the quote of the karl tajagi the father of soil mechanics unquote unfortunately soils are made by nature not by man and the products of nature are always complex as soon as we pass from steel and concrete 
to the earth, the omnipotence of the theory ceases to exist. Natural soil is never uniform. That is very important consideration he has made at that time. Its properties change from point to point while other knowledge of its properties are limited to those few spots at which the samples have been collected. In soil mechanics, the accuracy of computer results never exceeds that of a crude estimate and the principal function of theory consists of in teaching us what and how to observe in the field. So, one important thing which is required to be noted, soils are made by nature not by man and the natural soil is never uniform and its properties change from point to point. This complicates and indicates the complex behavior to the soil. Before looking into the details, let us look into the constituents of the soil mass. So, the basically as we discuss, its origin is from the disintegration of the parent rock with the different uh, levels of weathering either due to physical weathering or due to chemical weathering. Wide ranges of soil solids can be possible. So, behavior of the soil mass under stress is a function of the material properties such as size and shape of the grains. Sometimes if you have got a rounded or sub rounded aggregate it may not be good for generating resistance against external forces or angular sub angular grains may provide good resistance against external forces. Gradation the proportioning of the soil sizes, mineralogical composition the mineral minerals prevalent in the soils and arrangement of the grains whether it is a loose dense arrangement or a uh, which shows the soil structure arrangement. Interparticle forces basically the resistance to external forces is governed by interparticle forces it all depends upon how the interparticle forces mobilize during the process of the soil uh, phenomena. The material properties which are functions of constitutions of the soil mass material properties here you have seen they are functioning of function of constituents of the soil mass like size and shape of the grains, gradation, mineralogical composition, arrangement of the grains and interparticle forces. As we have seen here now, soil is a particulate, particulate material which means that a soil mass consists of accumulation of individual particles that are bonded together by mechanical or attractive means though not strongly as for rock. The spaces between the solids, voids or pore space, for example, if you look here, uh, if you look the soil mass, it has got solids which are covered within the soil mass. Spaces between these solid particles are called voids or pore spaces. in soil mechanics. So, these are the solid particles and these are the pore spaces. So, these pore spaces either can be filled with water or air they are usually it is referred like either liquid or gaseous, gaseous materials. So, in soil in most rock voids exist between the particles and voids may be filled with a liquid usually water or gas usually air. So, in rocks also the voids do exist, but the soils they, they exist they have pore voids which are filled with a liquid or gas. So, here in this slide the actual soil bulk consisting of the soil particles water and air is shown. As you, as you can see here this is the ground surface the top surface of the existing ground level at that particular in this particular figure and this is the ground water table where the preatic surface this is also called preatic surface where the atmospheric pressure is 0. This is the arrangement of the solid grains. The grains which are submerged below the water table they are all filled with water. 
that means that the wall void spaces are filled with water. So, voids water surrounding the particles at points of contact between the particles and filling the small voids can be seen here in some of the locations. In some of the locations you are seen here uh, some white spots they are nothing but uh, a portion within the pore space filled with air. So, above the water table the soil can be partially saturated depending upon the type of the soil and soil can be completely saturated if it is below the ground water table. There are also cases may arise the soil can be completely dry also. So, when you look into the soil, soil is inherently multi-phase material. Generally, it is called three-phase material because it has got solid phase, liquid phase and gaseous phase. As you have seen here, if you look into the this particular block having the unit cross section area, if you idealize solids then solids form at this particular location. This particular portion is filled with water and this is air. So, what you are seeing air, water and solids. So, as you look into this the solid phase which is solids, liquid phase is with water and gaseous phase can be usually with air and it can also be two phase material. For example, soil is said to be dry when it has got solid and gaseous space like solids and pore voids are filled with air only. It is also said it is saturated if the voids are filled with water completely. So, soil can be two phase material also in the dry state and saturated state. Generally, it is a three phase material with solid phase, liquid phase and gaseous phase. That is what it has been shown here a cross unit cross section of the block here shown where three phase system it consists of as you see here solids the green ones are solids and the brown colored solid particles they are due to the pre present organic matter due to the decayed vegetable matter and these white spots they are portion of the voids which are filled with air and the rest of the portion of the voids are filled with water. So, in this type of soil is a three phase system soil in which solids, liquid and gaseous phase exist. So, these are idealized like as I shown previously as solids, liquid and gas. So, this is basically a three phase system with uh, uh, solids, liquid and gas. If you look into the solid phase, they are primarily rock, they consist of rock forming minerals. The sizes can be greater than 2 micrometers and their reactivity is poor and prone to disintegration because they are basically uh, uh, rock forming minerals with uh, large in size. So, they are prone to disintegration into smaller sizes. Clay minerals basically they are formed due to the uh, decomposition of the parent rock mineral and accumulation of the secondary minerals in the process of transportation. So, basic materials that form the soil mass, soil mass are clay minerals, their size can be less than 2 micrometers and they have high reactivity, high reactivity. And the solids also do, they do possess cementing materials with the presence of carbonates. The cementing materials they are actually having uh, carbonates or oxides in the organic matter they try to induce the binding property to the soil mass. Organic matter which is high which has got high water absorption the main characteristics is high water type water absorption and they are compressible or unstable. So, solid phase of the soil consists of 
primary rock forming uh, minerals, clay minerals or cementing minerals which induce uh, uh, binding properties, organic matter basically the presence of high organic matter causes problem in which the compressibility increases and basically unstable material and high water absorption. So, if you look into the other component like liquid phase what you have seen is liquid phase can be further divided either water or dissolved salts. If you look into the water, water can be either pure water or polluted or contaminated water. So, the pure water soils or polluted, polluted water soils also they do exist and in dissolved salts sometimes sometimes we will have a water soluble salts or water insoluble salts. Water soluble salts basically they can have chlorides, sulphates, bicarbonates. These uh, minerals uh, particularly chlorides, sulphates and bicarbonates uh, they are basically water soluble in nature, they are not capable of binding solid grains and they are more corrosive and acidic in nature. So, water soluble uh, salts particularly may have uh, less binding property to the soil and water insoluble salts basically carbonates or oxides which are present in the organic matter capable of binding the solid grains they induce uh, a binding property to the soil mass in the form of uh, liquid phase which is with the water insoluble dissolved salts. Gaseous phase again when you look into this they are basically air and gas mostly the air and solids if the solids have got air and solids it is called two phase system with the dry soil state and if the voids are filled with the water completely as you have discussed in the previous figure then it is called a saturated soil. So, if the gaseous phase can be filled with air and solids with a two phase system that means that here we will see a system with solids if this is idealized it will it gets reduced to the figure of our uh, the idealized figure changes like this solids usually air this is these are the solids soil solids and organic matter and these are pore voids filled with air. So, the idealization reduces to to two phase system. So, this is called a dry soil. So, where you have seen in this case these are the voids which are filled with air only and these are the solids which are separated by air which is prevalent in the voids and which is idealized like this if you separate solids and air then it deduced to be a two phase system having two phases like solid phase and gaseous phase which is in this case filled with air. So, this is a two phase system called dry soil because these things we will be using in the uh, future lectures. As you said below the ground water table for example, if there is a ground water table here. So, soil can be completely saturated or partially saturated in this zone. So, this zone is called Wado's zone and this is the 
ground ground surface in this case here is can be partially saturated soil here below the ground water table to maximum extent the soil can be completely saturated so here the soil above ground water table it can be three phase soil below ground water table it can be two phase soil basically in a saturated state basically in a saturated state so here what has been shown is a ground surface a partially saturated zone it can be saturated completely depending upon the type of the soil that we will be discussing in the future lectures so for this case in this particular example where the soil above the groundwater table is referred as partially saturated soil three phase soil it can be dry because of the evaporation of the water in the soil void voids it can be also a dry soil or it can be it can it can transform into a two phase system soil and the zone above the groundwater table is called wadows zone because this terminology will be referring in the future lectures of our soil mechanics in this case below the ground water table completely saturated means that all the voids are filled with water uh, all the voids are filled with the water so in this uh, lecture we have seen the necessity of the soil mechanics basically why we required to study soil mechanics uh, from the different disciplines in engineering like structural engineering transportation engineering environmental engineering and hydraulic engineering point of view definitely we appreciate the interest of the subject and uh, complexity of this uh, behavior of the soil necessitates us to understand its properties uh, uh, in a better way so that a safe structures can be constructed uh, for the better performance of the structures and in this uh, lecture we have seen the origin of the soils and what we discussed is that basically the basic origin is from the parent rock and they get uh, disintegrated due to the physical and the chemical weathering so basically we said that the parent rocks are basically igneous rocks sedimentary rocks and metamorphic rocks and with the disintegration of these rocks they form two basic types of soils residual soils and transported soils residual soils are basically they remain in the place and they have their resemblance to the parent material mineralogical characteristics transported soils they get transported from their origin to some other place either by uh, agencies like wind air wind wind or air uh, water uh, by ice or other agencies with this uh, different types of transported soils are formed then we have further classified transported soils and discussed about uh, some of the examples of the transported soils like loess uh, tuff marl and these are the examples of the warwood clay are the examples of the transported soils then we have tried to understand the constituents of the soil mass and we said that soil has basically has got three phases solid phase liquid phase and gaseous phase basically the solids can have solids which are uh, disintegrated from the parent rock or some clay minerals which are very very fine in size which are having a secondary mineral characteristics and also can have organic matter due to the decayed vegetable matter which is prevalent which is prevalent in the particular area water or liquid in the form of uh, pure water or polluted water or with the dissolved salts basically uh, insoluble or soluble salts 
or gaseous phase we also discussed that it can have air or gases. So, we also introduced in this particular lecture two phase system like dry state and saturated soil state.